Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we uncovered the final treasure of the giants at long last, closing the book on the ancient giant civilization. And we finished unlocking every skill branch on every character. This time, overlooking this gorgeous but tragic view of what's left of the Mechanus, we are going to be finishing up every side quest everywhere. It's been a long, long road, but it's finally coming to an end. And I think we should begin things on one of my absolute favorite heart-to-hearts of all. It is the perfect place. For funny Rhine moments, of course! <laughs> Let's get this started, a scene revisited. Rhine, look, what a sight! It's a sight, all right. What's wrong, Rhine? It's not like you to look so serious. Hey, I can be serious if I want to! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. What's on your mind? Normally, I always go for the happiest possible option in a heart-to-heart, -heart, but this is going to be the lone exception other than the tutorial where I'm going to be going for the worst possible route because I just like it that much. Tomorrow's dinner, what else? I look out across this beautiful vista and can't help but think, what are we going to eat tonight? What? How are the two in any way connected? I'm just worried about it, okay? You know, it's my turn to make dinner. And you always get angry when I cook. And you know why, too. Because you just cook meat. So, meat's good. It's full of, er, uh, meat. And don't you think my cooking's improved since I left the colony? Well, I don't remember you cooking a single meal at the colony, so... Nope. Had never touched a frying pan in my life. But I'm new... But I'm a new Rhine these days. And I've decided that tonight... I'm gonna make you my extra special specialty! Ooh, what is it? Sautéed beast on the bone! So, I get a big old joint of meat, then I marinate it for 24 hours and roast over an open fire. A real man's dinner! If that's all you can come up with, I'm never eating your food again. As if I'm waiting another 24 hours for tonight's dinner! Haha, <laughs> gotcha! Don't worry, Fiora, I was only joking. Yeah, laugh it up, it's all one big joke to you. The rest of us are sick of you serving up big burnt slabs of meat. Alright, fine, why don't you teach me how to cook more stuff? Now, Ryan, I don't mind teaching you, but are you going to listen? You remember what happened last time, don't you? You borrowed the Monado and tried to use it to cut vegetables! <laughs> Don't you worry, Fiora. When we get back to the colony, I'll be the best student ever. You better not let me down. I can just see you injuring yourself using a real knife. R right. Man, this cooking stuff sounds dangerous. I hope you're gonna be gentle with me, Fiora. <laughs> Minus the innuendo at the end right there, I find that to be probably the single most entertaining heart-to-heart, -heart, just on a comedic level. It's great. I love it. Every line of that whole thing is just brilliant. But, um, even though I viewed the worst possible route of this one just because I like it that much, the best route is very much worth your time, and I highly recommend you check it out in the end of this video, as always. I said we were going to be finishing up every last side quest in this video, and that's true. There are 480 side quests in Xenoblade Chronicles. We have yet to complete three of them. The first of which is here on Bionis Leg. I'll meet you over by the refugee camp. We want to go into the refugee camp cave and talk to Elior E.T. von Home. Hey, I don't suppose you're going to Storm Marsh anytime soon. Well, we do have skip travel abilities, so I think we could swing over by there in about three seconds flat. There's some Hyantia like me in Storm Marsh as well. I read in some book that it has a special meaning to the Hyantia. Only thing is, the fog is dense and you can't grow many crops. Or so it says in my copy of Amateur Adventure. That is an adorable title for a children's book. I was thinking that they won't have much time to eat, much to eat. Can you cool lot and let, go help them? You look, you could take them some food. Oh my. Did I say something wrong? Such noble sentiments, what an admirable young man. Meeting you fills my heart with gladness, young sir. You speak really fancy, who are you? Who am I? Well, I suppose I shouldn't expect you to know that. Hmm, are you someone important? A famous adventurer? Or maybe an important explorer? 
I can tell from your face that I'm way, way off here. Anyway, can you help them out? Supplies for Satoral is easily one of the most remote and demanding side quests in terms of prerequisites. To do this one, you must have completed Battling Brutes like we did last time, which is the end of a side quest chain that in turn required you to finish the Befogger Tomb side quest chain, which was not open until after Makana's Core, and you also need 5 star affinity with the Colony 6 area to do this one at all. It's a lot, to say the least. Well, we gotta go give the goods over to Scarlin over at the, Sor the Sororal statues. Why does, like, every side quest having to do with the refugee camp involve just food of some kind? I mean, I guess it's a refugee camp, so they probably don't have much in the way of food there, though, but this is, like, what, the third time that we've had a quest surrounding around food in this really small area? You know what I'm talking about. Scarlin, you have such a nice name. You really do. I'm extremely grateful. You can see you can see we have little food. We are not used to living like this. This should go some way towards improving our lives a little. Thank you so much. We are in your debt. I hope I was of some help. Uh yeah, you kind of gave them food when they were starving. I'd say that was some help. Well, we get a nice easy reward for that. We get speed five goggles and speed five arms for Fiora. Even when the quests are about Melia, they still find a way to be more about Fiora than her. That's it! This was a completely standalone side quest. No continuations, nothing else to it, just that. You might think they're getting soft toward the end, though, but no, trust me, the other two we gotta do are plenty difficult. So, we are now going to leave for the only area in the world that we have not completed every side quest in. A quick look at the quest log will reveal that we have accepted both of these remaining side quests many videos ago. Replica Monado 4 and Defend Colony 6 Demon are the only ones that remain, and they are right here, of course, in Colony 6. Or rather, outside of it. So, first on the list, or second on the list, wow, two bad analogies in, the ro in a row, is Defend Colony 6 Demon. We want to take care of this one before the other. If you recall, when we hit 95% completion in Colony 6, it was attacked by Demon King Dragonia. And we did absolutely nothing about it, meaning that this place could have burnt to the ground long ago and we wouldn't have known about it until five videos after the fact. Yeah, we are great defenders of this place. So, in fighting Demon King Dragonia, I wouldn't recommend seriously fighting it your first time. Instead, I would recommend playing as Ricky and just using Yoink on it. Keep auto-attacking, do not use Ards, just keep using Yoink again and again. Why do I specifically recommend this? Well, I never really went into items that you could get from using Yoink because they are the very same items that a monster will drop from chests anyway, so... You know, you could just do that, just defeat them to get the same items. Or better yet, if a unique monster really had an item that you wanted, you could just fight it over and over again, you just wouldn't get the affinity coin. There's no limit to how many times you can defeat most unique monsters. Demon King Dragonia is different. After you defeat it once, it will never respawn, and it has some really good drops. In fact, right there, I just got an item. How about we run away and see exactly what we got there? I wasn't able to hear what Ricky said. He'll be like, ooh, Ricky, find rare item, or something like that if he gets a rare item. Didn't actually get to hear it. I don't want a vision right now, guys. I'm just trying to get away. And you know what? We're going to get away, so this vision is meaningless. And even if we don't quite get away in time, I guess Shulk will just take one for the team. Charlotte, why are you jumping around? Let's get out of here. Leave me alone! Come on, leave us alone! Crap, I'm actually leading him toward the colony. Okay, I got a Demonic Everflame. This is a very valuable material, so I'm quite glad that I got that. Oh, damn! You need this for Replica Monado 4, so I actually have that already taken care of. That wasn't what I was intending to show off at the first yoink, but damn, I got lucky. Well, actually, I think that might even be the most common item he can drop, so... Never mind, maybe I'm not lucky after all. Take I pressed A way too freaking fast there. How about I go into the equipment menu? What I was wanting to show and why I recommended using Yoink is that it drops slotted pieces of the Letios Heavy Armor equipment set. I believe you can get Letios plates and Letios arms from it. If you're into heavy armor, and there are definitely uses for it, I have actually considered putting some heavy armor on Melia as a just-in-case type thing because... She doesn't really get hit or attract aggro much, though, but I might as well have her defenses as high as possible for when she does. The main reason why this is so special is that there is no other way to get slotted Letios arms. So if you want to go out for a really good heavy armor set with the Letios equipment, you're going to want to steal from this enemy enough times to get as many Letios arms as you need. 
With all the yoink nonsense finished, how about we actually try having a serious run against Demon King Dragonia? Now, I apologize if I referred to him earlier as a unique monster because I think I did, and truth of the matter is, you can tell by his portrait and lack of boss music, he's actually counted as a regular enemy. A quest exclusive one and a damn powerful one, but still technically a regular enemy. But there is something about him in being a regular enemy that is, um, how should I say, hilarious. <laughs> he is not immune to instant death. This is a huge deal because if you can get off Charla's headshot and you succeed at getting the instant death chance with it, sure enough, you will kill him in one hit. But even funnier than this, and I really hope that he does it, he has an attack. Oh, Maybe we'll see right here. Come on. Fatal Crunch, yes! This attack has the effect of instant death, and it's a physical art. Melia has Reflection, which allows you to counterattack with whatever your opponent is going to use against you. This makes it so that you can realistically cast up a Reflection when Melia has the aggro and make him inflict himself with instant death. He can indeed die from one hit to this. Only downside of doing this is the fact that you will, like I said before when we first got Reflection, not get a chest for doing so because it counts as a suicide. Enemies are able to use various tactics in the game to kill themselves, and just to kind of avoid that kicking in, you are not allowed to do that. Unfortunately, I accused him the way too late on that. Oh, uh, wow, that was kind of bad that I actually got hurt by that. Well, I build myself back up again from that really bad move of using Hypnotize way too late there. I should probably mention a few more things about all that yoink nonsense that you should know. First off is that you simply will not get the item that you want all the time. You might steal Ether, you might steal HP, or better yet, you might even steal experience. And that can be a good thing because at my current level, I got roughly 100,000 experience every time this happened. That means that you could very easily get a level up across the entire party in the time that it would take you to get all the items you want. Second is to remember that Yoink will always fail if you are more than 10 levels below the enemy. You must be at least level 89 for this to even work. It's just kind of that way so you can't get endgame equipment really early from these really powerful enemies. Or better yet, get hundreds of thousands of experience when you first get Ricky around level 30. And ooh, uh, vision. Another fatal crunch. Sounds like some kind of evil breakfast cereal now that I think of it. It seems to always do the same damage as my max HP as well. Oh well. Well, we'll go for the elemental dis- Go for the- bleh. Go for the elemental discharge. Yo. Ryan, you don't have any break arts. I'll go for sword drive. You know what? Should I try to metal blast him? He does get break in, a, in the chain attack, okay. I can do this and then do wild down. Indeed. Knock down the dragon. Ooh, that was close. Go for it, Sharla. Oh, I don't. I was trying to. Okay. That was not me forgetting days. I quite literally was trying to just click on head shaker and I actually clicked on head shot. I guess to be fair, they do have the same first five characters, six if you count the space, but that was still pretty bad. I could have dazed him a lot longer if I would have actually gotten that off. Wow, he's staying down for quite a while. Yeah, he really took that. Here we go, another vision. Probably gonna be the same art as last time. No, nope, burning justice. This one is a bit on the dangerous side, because that hits everyone in the party, even though it doesn't show it in the vision as per usual. I have no idea how all these wheat fields have, uh, not have, have managed to avoid getting burnt down all this time, but apparently they have. Let's go for a mind blast. Come on, Melia, you can do it in time. No, you can't. Did not inflict the uh, status that I wanted. Please survive. Wow, this isn't doing as much damage as I thought it was going to. Maybe I took on this thing a little bit too overleveled, actually. I know it sounds a little bit silly with me being four levels below him, but you know what I mean. Melia is really good, Ryan's great at toppling, Charlotte does have her uses when fighting overleveled stuff, you know what I mean. Let's finish this before that vision even comes true. Yeah, this is going very smoothly. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nope. Oh. Did it! Wow! That is like the weakest experience reward. Good and fixed! Oh! Wow, I think that means something. Uh, also worth noting, you are not able to get a gold chest drop from him. The gold chest items that he would normally drop are only gotten from Ricky's Yoink, thus there are even more items you can get from him. Sure enough, I got the Ledios arms. Juju, this is the last time I have to look at your stupid face because, yep, 
100% completion in Colony 6. That's what that achievement was signifying. We are all done here. Yet, there is still that one side quest that we've never completed here that is not counted towards said completion. How about we get the other two items necessary for Replica Monado 4? At the village entrance in Machina Forest, should you jump down... I said jump down, not climb the vines down. Oh, actually, I might want to grab on the... Okay, good, that wasn't going to kill me if Charlotte was in any indication there. After jumping down, you will find, not Infernal Dinos, but the rather large, if I can lock onto it, it's actually behind quite a lot of trees. If I may lock onto you now, that would be very nice. You're making me... Okay, good. You're making me very awkward. The Lake Lit Mammoth. This non-aggressive enemy that we saw in our first visit to Magna Forest is the enemy that drops... Level ups for Shulk and Charla, apparently, but more importantly than that, the Mammoth Horn! Next, we go to Spiral Valley on Bionis Leg. From there, we're gonna wanna jump off of a cliff and just go to the lower level to get down to the Windy Cave. This is something that I have not ever shown before, and actually, I'm a little bit sad I never showed it sooner, I just never really had a reason to. This is one of my favorite areas in the entire game, which is really strange to have this as one of your favorite areas, but... If we haven't been to it by, what, the 115th episode, you can bet it's really remote and it's just a nice little hideaway. In going through the Windy Cave, there are all kinds of high-level enemies, but they should be no trouble for you. They should give you absolutely no trouble at all at this point. What am I doing here? I should make it daytime for this. Same argument for Satoru Marsh Day versus Night, just flipped here. Even though by Honest Legs, nighttime music is great, I really do like it, and it's still a nice place at nighttime. It's just that it's so high energy and just so cheerful during the day, and you just want to run around it and explore. It's just... There's no competition. Even though by Honest Leg at nighttime is no slouch atmospherically or musically, by Honest Leg during the day really is just king of this particular area. I would have it another way, except maybe Twilight if you're overlooking the Mechonis, because that view is just incredible. Well, de back here is the crevice waterfall. You look over there, you can actually see where the waterways in Bionis Leg end. And sure enough, it just goes on, presumably forever, down into the endless sea below. Yet another instance of that. From here, you can see, you know, various things of the Bionis, those, I guess you'd call them maybe frills that are on the sides of it? I really don't know what I would call them, honestly. But all the way back here, you could have technically come here on your first visit yet again. I, once again, pretty much if you can see it, you can go there on your first visit. There are some Tyrkins back here, and if we lock on to all the different ones, you will find the Field Altrich. This would have been very nasty to discover on your first playthrough all five of you are coming here for the first time, I'll say that much. But this unique monster, we indeed have never killed before, meaning there's an affinity coin in for us. But not only that. Oh, come on! You could have just given me the kill during that chain attack. It's level 76. We're 95. Come on! Well, at least it dropped a gold chest. Ooh, tranquilizer and air fang. But more importantly, you get the Tyrkin Elder Medal, which, as you would guess, is required for Replica Monado 4. I know you knew what was going to be happening there, but, you know, I gotta play it up a little bit because you might have the level 10 art books be kind to you. Or art Level 10 art books be kind to you? No. The level 10 art book gods being kind to you. What am I even saying here? Uh, if you keep going down this pathway, there's actually still quite a bit more to explore. And yeah, this is the only time that a quest ever calls for you to come here, and I don't think it ever tells you to go any further than that. You'll see, though, that it does loop around to the Zack's guidepost on the upper level of Bionis Leg. In fact, that's where that winding pathway leads to. I think there's an Aether Crystal to it? No, I guess not. Okay. Well, we've been over there before. Um, we killed those leg Tokilos for one of the first Monado replica quests, so you can see exactly where this is in relation to some other places. Oh, wait. Sure enough, on my walk back, I did see that there is indeed an either crystal deposit here on the map. I, If only I walked another two inches this way. Whoa! Look at this board here. This looks kind of out of place. Oh, well, at least it does until you see that one over there. I... Kind of getting a bit of deja vu from here. I do kind of wonder if I didn't show this either Crystal Deposit already. But either way, I guess it's not really any big deal if I did or if I didn't. You can always use more Aether Crystals, except for these, because they're probably level 2. If not level 1, considering how early in the game you could have found them. Back to Colony 6 with all of our Replica Monado materials. 
Honestly, now that I think more about it and I say it out loud, I'm not sure why I like the crevice waterfall so much. There's other waterfalls that run off the Bionis forever and do have that air of mystery to them, but maybe it's just because it's so remote, I felt just kind of some charm when I discovered it, though, because I think it was the first of those waterfalls that I ever personally found, and just maybe it's because no one ever really talks about it. I just kind of feel like I'm the only one that really gets it, you know? Well, Vinaya, we got every single material that you asked for in crafting these replica Monados. Let's make the final one. We could have made this sooner by using Ricky's Yoink by getting the Demonic Everflame that way, as I showed, but I wanted to get this one last, personally. The Monado Dogma offers a higher critical hit rate. The thin material used to increase the blade output. The high critical hit rate comes at the cost of lower defense. I hope this weapon gives you the strength and power to succeed. And that is every single side quest in all of Xenoblade Chronicles complete. Took 115 episodes, but that is 480 quests in the quest log, or rather more like 450 because there's some mutually exclusive ones, but I still showed those, damn it! I showed them. <laughs> That is every single one. What is our reward for getting that replica Monado 4 quest completed? That's a pretty dumb question considering you already know that it's going to be the Monado Dogma, but what does it do? It has a 30% chance of critical hits. In addition, it does at least have better attack power than the Saga, but not better than the Abyss, it's equal to the Agni, not better than the Rudra because of the damage range glitch, and it... It's definitely better than the Replica Monado, I'll tell you. Well, actually, no, it's equal auto attack damage. That just doesn't have as good a defense as. As cool looking of a weapon as this might be, it has the same weakness as the Monado Saga in that it only has two gem slots. While some people might see this as balancing, it is a little disappointing for how long it takes to actually obtain this weapon. If I had to pick a favorite Replica Monado, it would definitely not be this one. It would probably be a toss-up between the Abyss and the Rudra. If you're playing the new 3DS version where the damage range glitch is no longer a problem, I'd say the Agni is definitely a good contender uh, for that title as well. Uh, I might say the Abyss is the best overall in that case though, but that's just my personal opinion of course. Pick whichever one you like. We will be using the Dog before a little while, you know, because I do want it to have its time in the sun. Let's equip this. Due to the low defenses of the Monado Dogma, I opted to go for Auto Attack Stealth and Art Stealth so that I would just be generating less aggro all the way around. If you have just an aggro down gem that you feel is better, by all means go for it because freeing up one of those two slots for a critical gem is definitely worth it. I believe this is the highest critical hit rate you can get on Shulk, or in fact I think on any character, excluding the true Monado, so in a regular playthrough it is. As night begins to fall on this very accomplishing day in which we completed every side quest in the entire world and finally restored Colony 6 in every way to its former glory and so much more, we're off to go do something else because even though we have all side quests completed, that doesn't mean we have 100%. We want to go once again to Three Sage Summit on Valak Mountain. Upon coming here at nighttime, the very tranquil atmosphere will be interrupted by Final Marcus. We are going to take this thing on. Final Marcus is one of five super bosses in Xenoblade Chronicles. I've had many people ask me when I was going to talk about these things, but I just wanted to wait till we were done side questing for good, just so I'd be the highest level possible when taking them on. What makes this thing qualify as a super boss? Well, it is level 100 or greater. The super bosses are five monsters around the world that appear only after you have finished Makana's Core that are levels 100 to 120. Being only level 100, this is by far the easiest of the bunch. Final Marcus has some really nasty counter spike attacks, so I'd recommend having some way to deal with those. Ooh, I can do Final Cross here. If I could topple him, that'd be absolutely fantastic, and this brings me into something that's kind of controversial about the super bosses. Pretty much, I think all but one of them you are able to easily topple lock. And some people don't like doing this. Some people do no topple lock runs of these bosses. And I do find that very admirable, but I will just kind of straight up admit, I'm honestly not that good. Okay, I by no means am using a topple locking party for this, but I just kind of felt it was wrong if I didn't at least acknowledge that you could do it and show just how good toppling these enemies actually is. Because there are times where you need to break from the action. There are times where you just need to shatter a vision tag and the best way to do it is by toppling the enemy to delay things and then inflicting them a daze. 
When fighting any of the other four super bosses, I would highly recommend agility up gems on any physical attacker and at least night vision five gems on all of your characters. If you recall, night vision gems are excellent at fighting enemies under leveled as at nighttime, they force attacks that would have normally missed into hitting. You're going to need these with how much higher level than you they will be no matter how strong you get. But I didn't equip any night vision gems for this fight. Why is that? Well, you just simply don't need them for final Marcus. They are not necessary in the slightest. The level 95, I really shouldn't have too bad of a time taking it out. The only things I'd really recommend for final Marcus are that you have some way of dealing with spike attacks, but not a purge is always good. Of course, you have your spike defense gems. There are skills that reduce spike damage. I believe Melia has one that reduces it by 50%. If you want to link that to your other party members, that is an excellent skill to have in this fight. But other than that, you don't really need a whole lot in the way of preparation for final Marcus in particular. Just gonna do the backslash, get another chain attack going. Uh, can I actually get a Monado art? Oh, I need to purge him like it soon. Chain attack chance time! He blocked that even though it was behind him. Double wind? Wait, what? Sharla, cooling down your rifle again, even against a super boss. Cooling down your rifle during a chain attack when I'm trying to get an epic combo going so I can finish him off. It really, really never ends. I know some people have said that I've been a little bit too harsh on Charlie lately. I'll, I'll admit that maybe I have been. She has been saving my butt lately. I've always said that she is good at fighting enemies that are higher leveled than you. You know, just makes it easier to survive. I mean, heck, that battle against those spiders in Tefra Cave. I don't think anyone will ever forget that. That was great. And we are almost to... Oh. I think anyone could really agree with that. Oh! Achievement Master Hunter. Achievement the future is ours. Well, let's, um, wow, I'm a little bit speechless. Let's open this chest. Unfortunately, oh boy, this is, this is bad. I was counting on getting a certain item from him and he didn't drop it. I'll be right back. To me. That is not the back of the enemy. This is why we need Xenoblade Chronicles X to come out so it'll tell me if I'm in back of the enemy or not on the HUD. Oh, baby! Um, okay! Um, I am nervous. I am about ready to- Oh, God, no! Oh, jeez, okay. I need to get the hell out of Dodge! It is entirely possible that while fighting that enemy, a blizzard will kick up. If that happens, that enemy that is chasing us right now, Avalanche Abyssey, level 120, the most powerful of the super bosses will spawn in the middle of the fight. This can happen anytime that there's ever a blizzard at nighttime, but oh, that is a nasty surprise when you're fighting a level 100 monster and that just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, I I'm done sounding like a French stereotype even though I'm actually part French. <laughs> But yes, I did want to note that that is something you should definitely be careful of, because if you're only equipped for fighting the final Marcus, odds are you're not going to stand a chance against that thing. In fact, it is impossible to even hit if you don't use night vision gems. Yeah, it's that bad. Got the level 10 art book for Backslash. Can't complain about that at all. There's the item we need. The Veritas Glyph is obtained 15% of the time from wood chests dropped by the final Marcus. Alternatively, you can use Yoink, which is what I did because I got tired of killing it over and over again even though the experience was good. So why is this material so dang important that I wanted to go kill a level 100 monster in order to obtain it? Well, the answer to that is back in Colony 6. We're going to be going over by the main entrance. At nighttime around here, apparently on a dark and stormy night, you think they would get around to finishing this dome so they wouldn't have to worry about weathering or anything like that anymore? Okay, no. That would probably be very expensive to maintain. But then again, we gave Atharon and Juju how many millions of gold? Then again, if Juju had it, he probably spent it on, I don't know, changing his name or something like that. I don't know. But um, what I was trying to say is that Gerald, we are going to trade with her. That is because after you gain 5 star affinity with Colony 6, which as we've seen is very difficult to do, she will have an item in her inventory known as the Love Source, a strange love potion much sought after throughout Bionis. 
You can try as you might, but no item is valuable enough to trade for it. No item except the Veritas Glyph. You must also have Ricky's friends now and Shulk's hero's privilege in order to make the trade fair. Otherwise, she will not trade it without those two skills. As you would guess, this is the final item that goes in the other page of the Collectipedia. With this next A button press, we have every collectible in Xenoblade Chronicles. That is complete, and for finishing that, we get a critical up 5 gem for the strange category for 100%ing the other Collectipedia. Aggro down 5. I'm betting that's probably going to go on Shulk or Melia. And if we exit out, Stamp of Insanity! If that's not a fitting name for what it is to get every collectible in this game, I don't know what is. But we freaking did it, man. We did it. Let's jump around for joy. Jumping around the entire colony. Squad jumps around the colony 50 laps now. In addition to it likely being your final collectible, the Love Source has another purpose, so I obtained another one to show this thing. Since it's a love potion, I bet you can imagine that you could gain some really high affinity with this thing, and in fact, no matter who gives it to who else, you will always get 100 points of affinity between those two characters. This is the most points possible by gifting an item. In fact, it is roughly three times the amount you will get from any other item that a character really likes. On my affinity chart, there is only one combination of two that does not have max affinity. Shulk and Sharla. Let's do this and make Ryan very jealous! <laughs> For gifting that from any party member to any other party member, we get the achievement Parties in full swing? Well, that wasn't what I was trying to get with that, but I'll take it. That means that it was the last little bit we needed, and we have max affinity between every possible combination of party members. But we also get love at first bite, which just means we gave a love source from one character to another character. I still say Stormy Bellagon is the fastest and easiest way to do that little bit of cleanup work at the end of the game to finish off any sort of affinity links that are not maxed out between your party members, but this is still nice. It's just kind of hard and time-consuming to obtain these items compared to just encouraging your party against the Stormy Bellagon over and over again. So this time around, we finished every side quest everywhere, finished the Collectipedia, finished the affinity chart, and killed one of the five super bosses. And believe it or not, there is still more to do in this game. Not much more, okay? I'm not going to make it sound bigger than it actually is, but we still do have a fair number of heart-to-hearts and various other things that I would like to take care of. And speaking of which, atop this building that we got for maxing out all the attributes of Colony 6 has one such heart-to-heart. -heart. It'd be a crime to not make this a bright sunny day before we view the Colony Reborn. So, Sharla, is this what Colony 6 is supposed to look like? It's definitely getting there. We've come a long way, a little more work, and it'll be perfect. Really? If you ask me, it's looking good already. Plenty of warm homes and thriving businesses. It's great! True, we have nearly everything we need, but we can't stop here. It has to be a place where everyone can feel safe. Then it'll really feel like Colony 6 again. You're speaking Shulk's language of that really feel. It's a safe haven for everyone, huh? I know what you mean. You've come so far, it'd be a tragedy to lose it all again. Yes, and that's why we have to make it safe. A place where no one will ever be sad or afraid of losing their home. You will achieve your dreams. How can you be so sure? Because it's everyone's dream. Everyone here has the same goal. Reconstructing Colony 6 is practically what they live for. I guess I'm the only one worried. But it's all I think about sometimes. How long peace will last, whether we'll be safe, or even even then? I can totally understand. What happened here was awful, and you'll never forget it. Just like I'll never forget the attack on Colony 9. But this is a chance for a new beginning. I guess if I can't let go of the past, I'll never get over what happened. Exactly! And it'll help if you create as many good memories as you can. Then maybe the bad ones won't seem as bad. Now you mention it, we've had a, some good times on the road. And I don't intend on forgetting any of those anytime soon. And, well, there are other good memories I don't plan to forget. Are you talking about the time you spent with Gatto? It might sound weird coming from me, but hold on to those memories. In the end, memories of Gatto are the only proof he was here. 
I'll never forget him. Don't worry. Thank you. For everything. I feel like rebuilding the entire world. I know the feeling, but I'll be glad if I can help you out even a little bit. Anyway, let's find the others. That is a fantastic heart to heart. As much flag as I give Charlotte in these heart to hearts when she has them with Melia and Fiora, that's a fantastic one. It really is. Honestly, I feel like Charlotte and especially Ryan are kind of underutilized characters. I guess to a degree, Ricky as well, because those three really do have a lot of their best moments in Heart to Heart. Just compared to Dunban, Shulk, um, and I guess to a degree, Fiora as well, who have a lot of their best moments in cutscenes. If you never 100% of this game, you might not have as big of an appreciation for them as someone who did. But anyway. That's all we're doing in Colony 6, and all we are doing in the way of side quests, and all we're doing in about three other aspects of this game. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're going to discuss some non-side questy things that I just never got around to talking about. You'll see what I mean when we get there. See you guys then. Oh, and quick note at the end of this video, since we have the maximum affinity possible across our entire party, I opted to just go and kill the Stormy Belagon because I never had killed it before since I wanted to fight it repeatedly every time I went to go see it to gain affinity. And in the process, I got the Sun Staff, which many people consider the absolute best weapon for Melia. Yeah. <laughs> 